But the only difference there would be like the amount of nodes that you can run at the same time. But beware, I mean, the, the Catalyst 9000 is a beast. It uh, uses 18 gigabytes of memory per node. The UI is one of the tools that wrap around the API, but there's also command line utilities, there's an Ansible plugin, there's a Terraform provider. The entire concept is lab-based. Like we, yeah. we talk about labs here, right? So every tile represents a lab. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble coming to you from Cisco Live once again. Really happy to have Ralph with me from the CML team. Hey Ralph, guys. welcome. Thank you, David. So 2.5, that's the new big thing, right? It is the next big release that we have in, in the store for you guys. And um, yeah, it has quite a few new things to show and um, we're happy to have it released. So Ralph, it's been a journey, right? I remember I interviewed you and, and others on the team a, a, quite a while ago. The feedback we were getting from the community was like, they didn't always like the GUI, but you've done a lot of work on the GUI since those old days. So perhaps you can just walk us through like some of the big changes in 2.5 and show us what the GUI looks like today and some of the features. So the, the two big things in 2.5 are actually like annotations, which is the thing that you see on our screen, like the, the, the colorful boxes down here and text and all of these things and also something that is called resource pools. Annotations will be in all of the versions of the product. Uh, resource pools is an enterprise-only feature, just uh, to remind you. So let's, there's, there's three versions, right? Is there's the personal and the enterprise, but in personal there's two variants. Well, it's personal and personal plus, but the only difference there would be like the amount of nodes that you can run at the same time. And it is Cisco nodes that are running at the same time. So you can have like a, a lab or like a hundred labs of 20 nodes, but as long as you just run 20 nodes max, you're good. So, okay, so let me just make sure I understand that. If I have 20 Cisco riders, I'm good on mm -hmm. the, the personal edition. Active at the same time or running at the same time. But my topology could have 40 devices as long it as could. I only start up 20 of them. I'm or good. if you have like additional devices like Linux or external connectors or unmanaged switches, these do not count against the load limit. It's Cisco devices that do count. That's great. So I could have like 50 Linux servers, if just as an example, and 20 Cisco devices all up at the same time, and that's fine on personal Correct. edition. That's an important differentiation yeah. to make or a point to make. And then in Personal Plus, it's 40, is that right? It's 40, correct. So 40 Cisco devices once again. Correct. And then Enterprise, that's probably not for most of us, but that's for business, right? That is for business, and that has a much higher node limit. And there are some other features to differentiate. But tell us about the resource limiting. Is that what, what did you call it? It's resource limiting, and that is actually something that is useful in multi-user environments. Yeah, and that's that's I mean, why it's an enterprise. If yeah. you're a single user, you don't want to restrict yourself, right? Yeah, but, <laughs> exactly. But if you're like competing for resources with other users, then there could be a user who grabs all the memory and grabs all the, the CPUs and whatever. And with resource limiting, you can say, okay, you only get 16 gigabytes of memory. That's what you can use. Or maybe five licenses or something, but not more, right? So that I have something left for me. So that helps in these kind of environments. It's, it makes sense for like, if I'm a, a training big, company or like enterprise exactly. and I'm getting a whole bunch of people to share the same resources, it makes a lot of sense. Exactly, in these kind of environments. For personal users, not useful. The other big thing, as I said, is the, uh, the annotations piece. Um, and, and some of the user interface enhancements that, that we have done. So uh, for example, I uh, go into this one, so this is an annotation example where we yep. have like text, we have shaded rectangles, we have, or we could have arrows. There, I think there's no arrows in here. So you see them on the side here where we have uh, rectangles, uh, ellipses or, yeah, and uh, text uh, arrows or lines. They could yep. have arrowheads and these kind of things. Yep. Um, we were wondering whether we want to have like some background images that might be for a future version. So okay. that is still something that we, uh, that we have on the roadmap in some ex to some extent, not necessarily you know planned for a specific release, but still having that in mind. Uh, also, depending on feedback, whether users say this is definitely something we want to have. There is like for personal usage, there's the Cisco Learning Community. I mean, that's the proper yeah. way to provide that feedback. Yeah. I mean, we also have. I'm on Twitter. I mean, like we have the the viral account on Twitter that's still there. So that's also something to reach out to me or to us, like as the team directly. I mean, we are open to all of all sorts of the feedback, right? The good, bad, and the ugly, right? Yeah. Um, so to make the thing better, because we want to make it so that it works for people, yeah. uh, there's certain things that we, as the engineering team, cannot really influence. But on the technical side, we are open to all sorts of suggestions. I mean, it looks so much better than it was in the early, early releases. Right. So, so previously, we had this uh, mechanic in there, this UI mechanic about the hovering, that halo thing, that yep. circle that showed up. So when you hovered over a node, the halo showed up and offered various options. 
we've now entirely switched to right-click menu. So you click on this guy. So we have this right-click menu where you right-click on the router and you get like a context menu where you have the options that are useful in this context. So in this case, I can start the thing or I can add an additional link, hide links, which is also something that you can get to when you double-click the, the node so like the links disappear which is also not something that people, a lot of people know about. We want to also make that probably into the right-click menu. So there are some things that we still are considering for optimization and making it more obvious how, how the mechanic is, right? Very useful if you have like out-of-band management, like all these links that do for the out-of-band or like create. Uh, and then- It's still there, it's just it's not showing there. in the it's GUI, right? It's not showing, so like okay. you can do the same thing and say- um, Oh, I get it. Um, show links, right? And then the links are back. So it's just a GUI it's, thing. It's to, kind of unclutter, it uncluttering yeah. the, the, the topology so yeah. that those things that are not really mattering because they are for management purposes, they're out of the way. And yeah, so that was one thing. And then we also have that for uh, the links itself, like context menu there to connect and so on. Yeah, I mean, that those things, there are some improvements in um, the menus down here about like sorting of these things, but they are kind of minuscule. I mean, nothing much there. One important thing that we did add to the to the system is in the, in the area of uh, nodes included. So I'm running this, by the way, I'm running this entirely on my laptop here. So I don't have like the entire like ridiculous nodes that use like tremendous amounts of memory yeah, yeah. On, on my laptop because yeah. I just simply cannot run them. But we do include with the 2.5 version, two new node types, which is the Catalyst 8000, which is an XE-based device, and the Catalyst 9000V, which is also an XE-based device, which can be used with DNAC. So, so those are both included in 2.5, right? They are included, but beware. I mean, the, the Catalyst 9000 is a beast. It uh, uses 18 gigabytes of memory per node. Wow. So it is a beast. But to be fair, in enterprise environments, I mean, if you compare this to like the cost of a real switch, memory is reasonably cheap. Yeah, the point is, that if someone wants to learn that stuff, it's available. Exactly. Yeah. And also for testing, because it's not about, I mean, for us, it's a, a broad spectrum of things that you can do with a product. I mean, we are learning at Cisco right now, and, and your focus is learning. Yeah. Um, and students and like trainings and CCNA and these kind of things. But we also cater for all sorts of other things like architecture designs and like, you know, network operations, automation and all of these other use cases that this product is good, uh, good for. That's great that you mentioned that. So, I mean, the feedback from the community, people are using this to do like tests before they deploy, that kind of thing, is that right? Yeah, exactly, that, that kind of thing. So we, we put a lot of em uh, effort into the um, automation capabilities because the core of the product or the foundation of the product is the API. Like everything is based on that REST-based API. We have a, a bunch of tools that wrap around the API. The UI is one of the tools that wrap around the API, but there's also command line utilities. There's an Ansible plugin. There's a Terraform provider. There is the viral Python client library. So these things are all possible with this product. For everyone who's watching, I'll put links to my other videos below if you want to see some of my CML videos. But Ralph, does Cisco have places where people can learn. So we do have a uh, GitHub repository on the Cisco DevNet GitHub side, yep. where we have a CML-community repository, where there's a lot of, there's a lot of like additional scripts and uh, node definitions for third-party devices, whether it's uh, a Linux desktop or some competitive device type uh, that you can download and integrate into your CML environment. Um, it's also code examples or things for secure CRT if you want to use it with like a third-party terminal, not using the internal terminal, and all of these things are, are available there. And then, of course, I said that before, the, the Cisco learning community uh, that has a lot of useful tips and, 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 and examples and stuff. So, I mean, the entire concept is lab-based. Like, we, yeah. we talk about labs here, right? So every tile represents a lab. And you can have, as I said before, like a ton of these labs as long yeah. as not everything is active at the same time, right? Yeah. So you can hit You're this. limited by, like, your storage, right? If it's not running, I mean, it takes almost nothing, right? As soon like as JSON you... JSON files or something. Right, exactly. It's a database at the end. But, okay. But as soon as you start things, virtual machines are created, and they take up some space. Um, but depending on the type of virtual machine, it's not that bad because we are kind of cloning to the original disk images, yeah. which makes it a bit more efficient in terms of uh, disk storage. So I have two options. I can either import something that has been given to me or I can add a lab, which... That's like importing a, a device type or like a... No, it's importing like a lab. You, so oh, you a lab, created okay. a lab, you exported it, you give it to me, I import it okay, here and it I shows it. up here, right? Yep. Um, and then if I, I just click the add button, it opens up the canvas. And then I have this palette over here, and I, I drag some devices. I mean, the useful thing here really is the uh, the external connector, 
which is something that allows you to connect to the outside world, yep. whether this is a real physical device or like some other resources, like, you know, get to the internet or like something like is that. Is that, so the device, like if you connect a router to that, is that router reachable from outside? So can I come into it or is it natted? It, it depends. I mean, this is something that you can actually configure. So you hit on edit config and you get down, down here. This is also like a little interface change. We now have a, a dynamic list of things. You don't have to type anything anymore. So everything that is available on your, on your CML instance, by default bridge and NAT, uh, will show up here. And in the next version, that's kind of a bit of an outlook into the next version, we will have an interface, external interface editor in a way, like as you are probably familiar with VMware and yep. the interface, like something like this will come. That's great. So if you so you drag the router and a switch in or just switch in a router, whatever works. Yeah. Let's have a look. Just so we, we basic topology. Pull something in here and then now this will work like this. You add link, you get this wiggly line yep. and then you drop it on to the device that you want to connect it to. It asks you from what port to what port you want to connect it. You create link and boom, it's done, right? Uh, so in this case, I need to connect this guy to this. And this is how you do well, a basic well, configuration. I mean, you've got some crazy topologies on your laptop already. I mean, guys create insane topologies, but I think for everyone who's watching, that's how you set up a lab, right? Yeah. And then just how do you start it up? It's pretty easy. I mean, just hit and simulate. I mean, I couldn't do it node by node. Uh, there's multiple ways actually. So I can start here. I can go down here, start the entire lab, or can even go here and pick the nodes that I want to start and uh, hit the start button up here. So in this case, this is equivalent to go simulate start. I hit start, I get the little watch icon or badge down here that tells me, yeah, something's happening. This has already booted. It shows the green check mark. This takes a while because it's an iOS thing. This will probably take another couple of seconds to get green check mark. So uh, you, you, you do, see, you, do you have to wait for that green check mark or can you see, see it booting? You can see it booting, but un, unless the green check mark actually shows, you cannot interact with it, obviously, yeah, like yeah. with a real device. Yeah, I mean, like it's the same up, thing, yeah, right? It's booting up, yeah. um, so you hit on console here and you see it's booting right now. Um, yeah, this guy is already done. Can I have like multiple browser windows or is it, do no. I have to go through this interface? So this is something that we are actively discussing for the next release. We'll probably totally redo the entire UI. We have some ideas okay. about splitting panes and attaching different consoles or VNC or packet captured panes to like the, the, the view down here. So there are some ideas that are floating around. We have some prototypes, but that's probably next release. But like it, if I was doing a lab and I've got 10 devices, let's say, I want to have like 10 putty type windows. Is, right. How do I get something like that? Well, that's the breakout utility okay. still. So, so I've got a video on breakout. I'll link that below. So it's still breakout utility, yeah. like so. I'm basically SSHing into the the topology. It's actually Telnet, but but it's That's wrapped. Local. It's wrapped in. Yeah, it's a local Telnet to local host. So yeah. It doesn't leave the machine, and then everything is wrapped into TLS that is authenticated and authorized to the backend. Uh, so it's it's not clear text, which makes it also more secure. And that's uh, the, some of the emphasis that we put into the product to make the product more secure. And the advantage of that is, I mean, you could use whichever client you want. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So whether you're a secure CRT or PuTTY or iTerm or whatever fan, it works with the, with the breakout utility. And then you can like have your windows stacked and have like 10 of them yeah, going. Yeah, or have like a tree or something yeah. that you have in secure CRT router one to 10 or something, you know, that these kind of things. So for everyone who's watching, please put your comments below. Things that you want me to ask Ralph, perhaps in the next update video, or go and follow him on Twitter. I'll put his details below. If you want to like get a a quick answer to something that you want to know about CML. Again, Ralph is technical, he's not sales, so ask him the technical stuff. Uh, we'll leave the sales for someone else. Neither of us are going to do the sales part. Hope you enjoyed the video. Ralph, thanks so much for sharing and thanks for improving the product. It's great. Thanks for Thank having you. me, David.